Hello my soccer universe, the Champions League has us back and boy this was an interesting two days I gotta say. I mean I thought the better games overall were probably on Tuesday uh, but you know there were a little bit more maybe more competitive games. On Wednesday I felt it was all about beatdowns but also very remarkable results in there as well and I think the favorites put Definitely out statements of intent. I'm talking, of course, from the thumb that Bayern over Inter, a 2 0 that was, in my opinion, flattering Inter. We are talking, uh, of course, about Manchester City going to um, Putrid, Sevilla, it has, it has to be said, and just rolling over them. Could have been a much higher scoreline. Uh, we're talking about the first 60 minutes of PSG where they were just absolutely fantastically brilliant, but then they also showed the other face. Um, not sure if I want to go as far with Real Madrid, but we also have to talk about Barcelona. But then they only played against Victoria Pilsen. So yeah, overall, uh, it was very, very interesting. Uh, it also had the first casualties of the season, more or less the first big ones. Uh, with, you know, uh, Tedesco was first uh, being ousted from Leipzig, um, probably replaced with Marco Rose. And Thomas Tuchel, where, yes, from the way he acted, it did not come as a big surprise. However, it seems like there's no plan to really replace him. Uh, and it was not a good time because he was so backed in the transfer market. So maybe he did some wrong, he said something wrong here and there, and that's what caused him to go out. I just, uh, it seemed. From one side, unsurprising, from the other side, it seems without plan. But you know, uh, I always say, when coaches get fi uh, when a Chelsea coach gets fired in the season and they look really, really bad, watch out Champions League. Chelsea is coming for you, because that's how they won the last two, in a way. Um, let's go through the games, uh, and we'll start with Chelsea, uh, displaying at Dinamo Zagreb, uh, where, yeah, I think Zagreb could have won by more. Yes, Chelsea had a lot of control uh, and also then created chances. But whenever Zagreb, especially in the first half, launched a counter-attack, it was high alert. And the way that Orsic scores his goal with the outside of his foot around the keeper, that was actually brilliant stuff, I gotta say. So in the end, I was in a way hoping, because uh, you know I have interest in the group Milan, that Chelsea gets at least a point at Zagreb. Um, but they fully deserved it. Three points, so uh, good for them. Uh, Dortmund against Copenhagen was actually a very interesting game because it, from the get-go, Copenhagen wanted to go uh, and attack them, but it took them about 10 minutes and then it was all Dortmund. And they got their deserved goals. Uh, a wonderful pass from Brandt to Marco Reus and also the way that Reina and Guerrero assisted each other um, you know, um, to score a second. I really, really like Jude Bellingham, then adds a third in the second half. It was more or less an afterthought, also has to be said, standing room in Dortmund. Um, and it's a good thing to see. Late on, a uh, goal for Falk is disallowed. The game was also marked by some pyrotechnic incidents. Why? Yeah, because Dortmund are twinned with Brunt B and so Copenhagen, that's a high risk game. The more you learn, the more you learn. Uh, I already made a short about Salzburg and Milan. I honestly I have to say, and probably we have to uh, also put this uh, to the Inter performance. Um, the Derby definitely played a fact in there. Uh, Milan was not as fresh because you put everything in the Derby. That's a more important game than playing at Salzburg. I uh, also need to mention the uh, horrendous jersey that Salzburg are playing in. I mean, they have a, uh, you will see it in the Bundesliga jersey recovery, they have a decent uh, home jersey. Why are you playing with this abomination? Uh, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, at least it spared me from seeing Milan uh, play their horrible jerseys. Um, Salzburg, I unlike unlike other Milan fans, I know what Salzburg is capable of. They are pressing the life out of you, and uh, despite having them uh, having a few uh, short-term injuries, even. Uh, they have too mu so many young players. I think the entire squad was below 24. Just to give you... And they can run, 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 run. And gave Milan loads of problems. Uh, it was just that when um, when I thought that Milan suddenly had a little bit control over the game, that they conceded the goal through Okafor, where basically he posterizes uh, Kalulu, which is something I have not seen the entire Serie A season. It also got to be said. However, Milan... Uh, 
Salzburg started out with power in both halves and then the longer the game went the more Milan had then the control over the game and they get then the deserved equalizer through Salem markers. There was a moment I think uh, early, early on where um, Fernando makes a mistake for Sal Salzburg and Giroud runs on goal and then he takes a shot instead of finding Leao. That, that was one where I thought yeah you could have put the one to bed early. Uh, in the second half, uh, there were quite a few chances for Salzburg to get the lead. But then in the end, uh, Milan again was pressing a little bit more and hit the post through Leao. I think overall the, the draw was what was deserved. The problem for both of these teams is that uh, Zagreb uh, got a win over Chelsea. Celtic also much the better team in the first half. Giving a lot of performance in there. And of course, you need to worry about Benzema coming off in the 30th. However... A few adjustments in the second half. And Real Madrid are cruising. Vinicius Junior gets the first one. Modric scores another one. And then even in Al Hazard. So an uh, easy one for Real Madrid in the end. Although there was a little scare in there. Uh, speaking of scare, Leipzig, yeah, seemed like they... The first goal by Schwed. What uh, the goalie um, Gulag is doing is something that can I mean he has the ball back pass to him. He has the ball. He goes with the ball left. He goes with the ball right, and then he loses the ball while 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 driving. So it's an easy goal. However, then they get the equalizer through Simakan only to concede a minute later through the same player, and then Schachter is taking Leipzig to town uh, with Mudrik and Traore adding two more. And as we already said. Um, Coach Tedesco is out, so all the goodwill that he had from this very good start and from uh, winning the cup already, already gone because Leipzig really don't look good. Speaking of not looking good, uh, first of the <laughs> City with those jerseys looked to me like West Ham. A little like a West Ham away picture. It just does not look right to me. Uh, yes, I think the maroon or the blue complement, it's not a City look, I'm sorry. Uh, this was another... Uh, horrible jersey in a way but okay i know when they play at sevilla but you know go at least all blue i think this would have made, made, made more sense um the first goal by city through holland shows you that uh they have another different dimension they don't need to carry the ball into the goal you have a holland there who finds the right spaces i don't even know what brilliant footballer he is uh, technically. However, he has such a positional awareness that he just puts himself into a situation where the ball eventually will find him. And if you have a De Bruyne there, who just needs to yank the ball in, I mean, he is also athletic enough to just put it into goal. And that was, for me, uh, the outstanding thing there. Foden, Holland, and Ruben Dias later on may, may make, make the proper route. I think the signs are on, on the wall that Lopetegui probably also is in trouble, uh, deservedly so. But that was a rather impressive display overall. Um, I honestly thought they even didn't go out of second gear to beat Sevilla there. Um, Benfica needed some time to break Maccabi Haifa down. But once it came, it came quick with Rafa Silva in the 50th and Grimaldo in the 54th. As, as I said, watch out for Benfica in this group. Uh, I, I can very well see them ousting Juventus as well. Speaking of Juve, um, they were taken to town. I mean, it was an interesting theory uh, that they have three on the back because maybe Bonucci plays uh, more interesting there. However, I think Juventus needs to arrive in the 21st century. You cannot all defend, uh, defend, 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 even if you have, yes, I mean, but by name, my Messi is a little bit of a proposition, uh, especially if they're in such a great form. I mean, I think even the best defense in, in the world would have a hard time defending what uh, Neymar and Mbappé do, 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 do in the first goal. I mean, the chip in from Neymar and the one time from Mbappé, that's next level stuff. Also, second goal, the way Hakim and Mbappé uh, combine very quickly is also next level stuff. I mean, those two goals are probably the best goals of the entire match day. And PSG looked the part absolutely brilliant. The only thing is, when McKenney makes it 2-1, suddenly the nerves were showing again. And actually, maybe, you know, they stopped playing. And that is something as a PSG fan that I would be a little bit worried. Because this is exactly like they lost to Real Madrid last season. But on the other side, uh, it's... 
if they are on, they are on, and they and this is a force to to watch and for everyone to enjoy. Will they win the Champions League? They are not my pick at the moment. Let's put it that way. Then for yesterday, uh, I thought that the early two fixtures were really interesting, and I expected tight games. Uh, far from it. Both Europa League finalists were taken to town. Ajax. Uh, I mean, yes, Rangers just got a beat down against Celtic. Uh, maybe not at the highest spirits. Uh, and Ajax, maybe we have been all underestimating them a little bit. Again, wait a little bit. But they seem to be undeterred from, you know, losing Ten Hag and, and many other important players, uh, starting from Grafenberg, Anthony and, and, and so on. It's Alvarez, it's a head in a corner in the first. Then Berghuis, yes, this was more or less an own goal. Uh, but then the, the goal by Kudus, uh, a laser. And second half, they were just playing it pretty. They are playing it pretty and Bergwijn gets another goal after a horrible jack pack pass. Uh, I think a Barisic goal was uh, then disallowed for offside, which I haven't really seen this automated offside so much uh, yet, but you know, uh, it, that's a different um, story. Uh, Frankfurt probably could have taken early, early, early lead, but uh, Sporting seemed overall the better team and they beat Frankfurt at their game with making very fast pace transitions. I mean, Glasner says, if you have the ball within 10 seconds, you need to shoot on the goal. Uh, that was more or less what Sporting did. Uh, the first goal came through Edwards. The Trincao goal um, came shortly thereafter. And that took the wind out, 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 out of the sails. And uh, you could see already Frankfurt struggling. And then uh, the third goal in the 82nd was a classic Eintracht. That's how Eintracht Frankfurt wants to score. So, very sobering result for Frankfurt. One has to has, 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 yeah. Sobering also what Liverpool experienced in Naples again. The 4 1 scoreline, in a way, is flattering because, especially in the first half, uh, it could have been just look, looking at chances, it could be 4 or 5 for them. Zielinski with a pair, I mean, already from the get go, Ozyman takes the ball and runs to, her, to, to, to its goal and uh, hits the post from an acute angle and uh the way i was watching this this time i also decided one game that i have on the big screen and then i was listening to um uh and had the the, the conference uh, where they switched between two into the game so i got one game and i chose napoli liverpool and i chose salzburg milan uh so i can actually say quite some stuff about napoli liverpool Napoli were brilliant, Liverpool defensively looked abject and they never could get their game going. And yes, this is a stadium where Liverpool historically has not performed well. But being taken apart that much, serious questions have to be asked from uh, Klopp there. Um, they get a penalty, yes, if you look at it then, it's a handball. At first you were a little, a little bit Zielinski puts it away. Then they earn another penalty um, where Van Dijk steps on Ozyman. And like the old adage uh, goes, uh, the foul one should never take the shot, although I think it's a little bit stupid. Uh, but Osimen, who was a little bit injured, so that's why I thought, and Zielinski put his penalty so well away, I was a little bit surprised that, that it that takes, of course, Alison Becker saves it there or puts it on the post, and even the rebound cannot be uh, uh, put in. And then there was another huge chance where Osimen gets gets well plays into Quara and. Quara takes a shot and Van Dijk saves it off the line. And I'm thinking at this point, is Napoli going to rule this? No, because Zielinski and Anguis are brilliantly calm, com combined in the 31st to make it 2-0. They need it then. Then Osimen, who has been uh, really destroying Liverpool. He come, comes out, Simeone come, come, comes out and Quara assists him almost immediately with his first touch. He makes it 3-0. It was an absolute destruction. And right after the half, you thought Liverpool is doing a little bit. Zielinski uh, thinks it over the goalie. 4-0. Yes, Luis Diaz then shows the FMA makes it 4-1. And then there were maybe a few chances for Liverpool, uh, but I honestly can say the time of Firmino is definitely over. Uh, Milner should not play in such a game. Salah, a little bit of a shadow of himself at this moment. And they all three came, came, came out and Liverpool was a little bit more dangerous, but uh, the damage was done. Napoli looked imperious in this form but we know how this goes 
Napoli is probably not going to make it out of this group, uh, despite them playing so so great. Another really remarkable, I mean, it was the expected ugly game between Atletico Madrid and Porto with a humongous stoppage time. A red card for Taremi for diving and, you know, I have it in for Taremi. To me, whenever I see him play, as brilliant as a player he may be, a, a good goal scorer in the Porto Portuguese League, he makes so many stupid decisions. And this dive was, if you're already on a yellow, of course you're going to get sent off. Don't do that. S-H-I-T. It's just not happening. Uh, Coca's goal early on in the second half was allowed for offside, but you really thought this is going to end in a typical Atleti um, nil-nil. And then Hermoso scores a header. I think it took a weird deflection or whatever. I mean, it, 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 it went over the goalie in and you think, okay, now they get the winner. However, it was a long stoppage time. Duh. And Porto earn a penalty. With a handball, I think also by er 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 Hermoso, that he's even protesting that, I don't understand. Ball off the chest and then he goes out with the hand and it goes, <laughs> clear penalty. Uribe puts it away, so you think 1-1. I even had already the results put into my file, 1-1. And then Griezmann scores off a corner, almost immediately off the kick, kick, kick off. And you know, Griezmann coming, coming off in the 60th minute, uh, on, uh, of course, in the 61st minute. And you could see that Steve Simeone was going to say, you know, I need you, I love you, da 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 da. I just have this situation. So yeah, uh, interesting game for sure. Uh, not so much between Bruges and Leverkusen, where Leverkusen is just down. Totally. I mean, they had a goal by Schick disallowed uh, for off offset, and then uh, I think well, well, there was even a bicycle kind there, but you know, Bruges overall uh, deserved their win, uh, the goal coming through Silla in the 42nd. But, you know, uh, Bruges had already good goals last season or, or, or early on and then uh, didn't fall apart. Bars against Pilsen, yes, it was the beatdown that they had. They had well expected. We didn't expect that Cassie scores the first goal. A uh, little bit happy for him. You know, I really liked him when he was at Milan, although I did not like how he left Milan. Um, Pilsen then almost got a penalty and a red card for Chris Christian. But if you look at the replay, um, he's actually uh, Mosquera. Is fouling Christensen and then Lewandowski scores uh, three in between. Sikura pulls one back, but Pilsen was way out of sorts. In Ferran Torres got on the score sheet. So, you know, uh, the options that Barca have, you know, I have quite some misgivings how the squad was built and the leadership of the club. However, if I look just at the squad, that seems like a serious squad. I don't think they win the champ Champions League, but this is a squad that can go rather deep. I uh, already say a little bit, I mean, Bayern completely dominated Inter. Uh, Lire Sarné, it was high time that they had, he makes it 1-0. Uh, and in the first half, I think the only thing that Bayern can uh, really say, uh, you know, not not be able about it, is the way, the little chances that they conver converted. Uh, it should have been much higher score, it should have been almost Napoli-esque. Inter were played off the park. Looked really, really impressive. And then uh, in the second half, just when you thought that Inter may find a way back, uh, Sané assists an on goal by Dan 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 Bros. It's 2-0. Um, again, I think that Inter played the derby, had an effect in there. However, Bayern was so much better. And I say it right now, at this moment to me, Bayern are my pick to win the Champions League. They look the part. Yes, they may have they may have some trouble scoring here and there, especially as of late. And maybe a certain uh, Polish striker could have helped there. But overall, I think Bayern look the real deal. And they have the pedigree, which is what Manchester City is lacking. I, I really would love to see a Bayern Manchester City uh, ma matchup, uh, maybe even before the final. That that would that would definitely be interesting. Spurs had some trouble with Marseille and then in Bemba red card of uh, on Son you know it, he was running semi clear goal although I'm not sure if it was was necessary to give the red red card but that changed the game um and then Richarlison scores a brace uh very late um to give Spurs the win but that was very very much workman like Okay, let's look at the uh, standings and you see uh, on the right side, I have kind of made bars to kind of show you how the overall situation changed for the teams. We see, of course, that Napoli uh, clearly are now um, uh, in, in, on the positive. 
Uh, it's you see also reaching the Nog Nog station. This group is a rather even affair. Napoli still the outs on the outside low looking with Ajax uh, uh, being the other favorites, but it's very much a three way race there. Um, Club Bruges definitely improved their chances, uh, but I still would think this Atletico and Porto. Uh, Barca and Bayern, yes, they already assert themselves onto this, this group. I think it's only who is one and two. I don't think that Inter can come back and I sure don't think it be Pil Pilsen. Pilsen, they, those two might actually decide who will uh, be in uh, second place. Uh, Sporting with a statement win and Spurs, I think, seem, seem to be now the early favorites. Um, group E is the one that's uh, also a little bit crappy. It's very, very level. You would still say Milan and Chelsea, but both dropped points. And this, this uh, three points by Zagreb might loom large uh, going forward. Uh, Schachter also put themselves slightly out of Leipzig and Celtic there, with Real Madrid, of course, cruising through that group. Uh, CD Dortmund, I think, also look uh, good. And as I said, Benfica are now ahead of Juventus, and that sounds to be right at this very moment. Um, if we look at overall uh, changes, you see here the winners Schachter with the biggest boost, their chances of uh, advancing increased by 121%. Zagreb, Club Bruges, and Napoli, uh, Sporting, uh, Dortmund, and uh, Benfica. You know, you 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 will see, see see the teams that are sorted by the chances of um, the relative increase in the chances of advancing. And the same thing goes for the negative, where we see that uh, Frankfurt, Inter, and Copenhagen, of course, are the big losers. Uh, together, you yeah, throw Rangers and Leipzig in there as well. As for the overall favorites. Not much changed on top except that Liverpool suddenly dropped down and we have now come Manchester, Bayern, uh, Manchester City, Bayern and PSG. Uh, Real Madrid hanging there in an uh, auspicious fourth place. Barca also improving up. So uh, we'll see um, where this will go. And in the next week uh, we have actually quite some interesting matchups. I think the Liverpool Ajax one is already a huge one. We have of course Bayern, Barcelona. I uh, guess that will be my feature game although I'm really intrigued by Liverpool Ajax uh, honestly um, so yeah uh, we also have Sporting against Spurs I think that is an underrated one and then on Wednesday huge one for Milan uh, of course I'm gonna watch that, uh, that one I'm interested in what Chelsea will do against Salzburg um, feature game for me is City against Dortmund uh, or Juventus Benfica uh, but I think City Dortmund, although I think City will uh, will win this easy, easily. I think there's Juve Benfica, there's a little bit more edge there. So yeah, that was it for me from the Champions League. Really, uh, for our for first week, I Champions League is always enjoyable, most, most of the time. There are not all the teams in there that I would like, but it's always enjoyable, especially these early stages. Uh, I think the late group stages is where I usually then lose a little bit in, in interest because it's already pre-decided. But may a new format, as much as I hate it, might actually have uh, an, an improvement there. But that's a top topic for another video. Please drop a line below what you thought about the games happening. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!